let's get into some stories. I'd love to like share some examples for us to get out of the gate here. How do you feel about that? All right, let's do it. All right, so Graham, when's a time you haven't backed yourself or when you've been dealing with the issues of like not uh, following through on that? Never. I'm perfect and I've never done this, Joe. I just feel like you're going to relate to everyone yourself on this one. Okay, well then that's just where we're at. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So one of the ones that I just always remember back to and it, it's actually been a really good grounding point for me because I've actually thought through this a lot. Uh, back when I had an SEO agency, um, I couldn't get results for a particular client and I just, it, like the client was upset, all these things, like I just got emails, pings, everything. I just couldn't solve the campaign. And what happened was I essentially stopped trying to sell more services to other people because I felt as though I couldn't actually do the thing. And so instead of backing myself and going, this is a one-off situation, I just need to pull in more clients. I'm going to be successful 80% of the time and sure, things are going to fall through the cracks. I actually just went complete introvert mode and I just said, well, maybe I can't do this. I felt like I had imposter syndrome and I'm like, no, well, no one's going to want this. So I'd like, like have a sales call with you, Charlie, where I'm trying to convince you not to use my services. <laughs> it's like I would tell you every reason why not to go with me because I don't actually want you working with me because I don't think I can actually do the thing because that was just the way that I represented not backing myself because I would just... Yeah, it was just easier for me to suggest to other people not to actually become clients. And then you never guess what I did next. I went and opened e-commerce stores, Charlie, because I felt as though maybe the reason was that I couldn't do it for other people. Maybe I can only do it for myself. And so then I went and started a second business and that <laughs> extrapolated the problem because it had two problems. And yes, infinite roll on from there. Oh, we have to Go on. this. Oh, I was going to say, I'm like, I'm we have really to. left little nuggets for you, but yes. And again, there was no, nothing no. in that story that's relatable to me, right, at all. <laughs> you did fairy. the same you're thing a, once. You're an angel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let's start at the start of that situation here where you've, you've come across a challenging client, you're doing this SEO campaign, and you were, you were unable to get results to them for whatever reason. Completely. All right, now- even though, just curiously at that time, had you been getting SEO results for anyone else? Yes. All right, how many? Uh, at that time, it would have been about six, maybe seven other accounts, and this was like the eighth account that wasn't doing well. Okay, so you had six or seven clients that were doing well and one that wasn't. Yep. And were these the, your first eight accounts or you done SEO and other things before that? No, these were primarily my first. Okay. So let I mean, I'm not going to be quick on the percentages here, but your strike rate on this is like you're like 85% successful? Yep, more or less. <laughs> All right, let's work with that. Okay, but because there's one account you weren't able to get result for out of this because of whatever difficulty was there, you've decided that, do you know what, I'm no good at SEO. Yeah, cause, and I started looking at the other accounts and justifying why they were going to go bad as well. So I'm like, oh, well, this one's going bad. The other ones are just going to get bad. Are they going to get worse? Then it was bad. It was not a good place. So, so yes. what did you think about the other accounts? That you just fluked it? That you were just yeah. lucky? No, was, yeah, so I looked at them. I've just gone, no, they're built on sand now. Like this one was the first one to be toppled and like I couldn't solve it. And so the other ones would, it's just a matter of time until the other ones come through. It was, I was in a bad place. But yes, like that's what I was thinking. Okay, so this is now we're not backing ourselves in our ability to do SEO here. And then the repercussion of that is that when you've had opportunities to get more clients, you've decided to like self-sabotage the sale so that you didn't have to go through failing on the SEO there. Yeah, and then I just I promoted it to no one. I told like no one that I did SEO. Like I just basically became a hermit. Like I just like just reversed and just like looked in and that was like it. It was, okay, cool. How do I not put myself out there to disappoint other people? How can I just disappoint myself? Which was I like build a business that doesn't rely on other people. It only relies on myself. E-commerce. <laughs> Dude, it was, this is deep. Yeah, yes. Well, I just find it really fascinating, right? Because even with an 85% success rate here, that it was that one example, the one where you couldn't get results for, for whatever reason, the actual reason doesn't even matter. Right? Completely. But it turned into this whole idea where you sabotaged a business, didn't back yourself to run an SEO business and ultimately ended up starting other businesses. And did you keep the SEO business at the same time? Uh, I kept one larger account that had like five different sites within it. 
and that was about it because I could easily manage it. But no, it was the plan was to completely pivot away from it. But yeah, I'm going to put this in. Like at the time, everything I say now is upon reflection because I am aware of the situation and like the decisions I was making now. <laughs> but at the time, it was all completely logical and justified. Like I didn't really know that I was trying not to get clients. I didn't really know that I was trying to like sabotage my sales process. I didn't really know that the reason I was opening an e-commerce store was to like get me away from the problem. <laughs> like it was just these things that my mind is just like, this is logical, Grant. Yes, yeah, so let's go and step into here. E-commerce stores, they're profitable. They seem to be the good thing that we can deliver on. Go and do that. That sounds like a great idea. In actual fact, it was just my mind going, eh, yep. You are not backing yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, this is what I think is so interesting about this conversation is like the, it seems so logical when we're in those yeah. zones. It doesn't show up as not backing yourself, yeah. right? It's only in hindsight do we actually get to look at this very, very differently here. Totally. Like to, to go deeper than that though, I'd love to know, why didn't you feel like you couldn't learn more SEO skills or pay someone to teach you this or bring in a contractor to help fix this account? Why was the whole ideation to get out of this business for you? Yeah, so I, I tried to fix it. Like I, I looked in and I was trying to solve it to the point of like I just sabotaged everything else, which is why I thought that the other accounts were going to get worse because I was paying more attention to this one account than them. So I'm like, so this thing was getting all the attention, um, which then just made me to that point, like second question it. So I was like, well, I, I'm seen as one of the smartest people at SEO. I should be able to solve this. No idea why I can't solve this. Uh, maybe I can't do it. And then it's like, well, instead of me trying to get, get, yeah, without going too technical, I thought it was more about like the age of the website and some problems that they had done before and I needed to be able to solve it. And then I forever thought that every client was going to be the same. And I'm like, well, how do I just solve that problem? It's just, you just go and make a new one. <laughs> and I'm like, well, the best way to make a new one is a new business. And that's that's kind of the path I went down. Completely Dude, such a good example. That is such a good example. Hey, fellow business owner. If this topic and value-packed short video has resonated with you at all and you want to dive deeper into creating wealth inside and outside your business, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now.